Income tax 2022-2023. Social security benefits. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2022, the line instructions you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused in once again, line one, that being income. Remember that the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, although a strange one where we have income up top, the equivalent of the expenses being the deductions getting us down to the equivalent of net income, that being here. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it taxable income our goal being the opposite of normal goals because it's taxes that being to have the taxable income as low as possible therefore when looking at line one we want to determine is something income if it is income is it something that we have to include as taxable income now we're talking about the social security benefits at this point in time Quick recap on a couple things on the Social Security Benefit Program. Obviously, there's two sides that we usually think about. One being our working years where the Social Security taxes are bad because we have to pay them into the system. And that's going to be the Social Security. We usually kind of clump them together with Social Security and Medicare type of payments that we're paying. They're coming out of our W-2s. Uh, wages or and or they're coming out of our Social Security uh, self-employment uh, taxes that we might pay if we have a sole proprietor type of business and then and then in retirement years we might get distributions from the plan that's what we're talking about now because now money is coming in there is all this new money coming in and it's not in and we're thinking is it something that we have to include in income now just notice that social security is a little bit strange because you might think hey look i already kind of earned the income and then i paid it in to the, the social security program and now I'm getting it back. So let's just do a quick kind of recap on the structure or how social security came about. Uh, and then we'll get into to the taxation applied to it and it might make a little bit more sense. You might be able to kind of get a story which will help you to memorize uh, the way the taxation is going to work. So when social security was put in place, it, was, it happened like in the 1930s in the Great Depression with when a lot of these laws came into play and a lot of people i think when it first came into play thought of it more as kind of a welfare program meaning we're going to be helping the people that are not able to pay for their own retirement possibly because they lived past their life expectancy or they had some type of tragedy happened and therefore when you're paying into that kind of program your general thought process is i don't expect to be benefiting from this program I expect it to be just benefiting the people that need this program. It's a welfare type of program kind of system. However, then it seems to have morphed over time so that the taxes have gone up and up and it's now kind of thought of, they're kind of advertising it from the government standpoint as though it's like a government retirement plan. Employment and a 401k retirement plan. Which would then think that everybody, no matter how much income you have, would get benefits from it, which is kind of the system that is going to be set up, meaning we're putting money in and the more money you put in, if it was just a normal kind of retirement plan, you would think the more benefits you should get in the payout when they pay out the benefits. So now we've got this kind of mix between those two objectives. So the more money you put into the system during your working years, which means you're going to put more in if your income is higher because it's, it's you're going to have a higher tax that you're going to be paying. Uh, as your income goes up, then your benefits will go up in general. The calculation of your benefits will take into consideration that you paid more in. However, it also has some welfare components, meaning that the more income you put in on the higher side of things, the less added benefit that you're going to get from those payments, right? 
And so you're actually, so that, so that's how kind of the benefit payments kind of are calculated in general. And then when you get the payments, they can also kind of put in play this mix between the payments being a welfare program versus a retirement program. And basically saying, if your income is below a certain threshold, then you may not be taxed. You might have an exemption of the taxation of, of these payments, but if your income is higher, then they're going to tax more of the of the income that you got from the social security up to uh, 85 percent i believe that's the general rule okay so we're going to be focused focus 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 in on the uh social security which is down here on line six of page one of the form 1040 if you look at the actual tax software then it'll it'll give you this kind of worksheet to determine how much of the of the social security is taxable the general question that will come up is, you know, if I get social security, how much of it is going to be taxable? That's good. How much do I have to include as taxable income? And the general rule is going to be, well, if you have a substantial amount of taxable income in your retirement years, it's going to be up to 85%. That's what you want to kind of keep in your mind as the general rule. You're going to be paying like at up to 85% of the, of the, uh, the social security. So, and remember when you're talking about social security payments, you're usually talking about people that are in, of course, their retirement years and they're getting uh, the social security payments. So you would expect then they wouldn't have a lot of W-2 income at that point in time. You would expect they're not at their peak working years in terms of earning years. So you might deal with taxpayers at that point in time where the social security is their, is like their main form of income, or they might have other things that they're depending on to live on that aren't taxable which means you're talking about people that might have a lower uh, tax, uh, taxable amount, or you might be talking to more well-off individuals who may not have W-2 income at that point, but they still have a substantial amount of income coming from and out of like IRAs, so 1099 Rs, and from investments in the form of dividends and uh, interest. And in that case, you would expect they would be being taxed at the max of their social security benefits, 85% included in income that's not the rate that's how much you'd have to include in income to then be subject to the tax rates in the progressive tax system ordinary tax rates okay so you will pay tax on only 85 percent of your social security benefits based on the internal revenue service irs rules if you this is from the social security uh, website by the way instead of the irs website uh, file a federal tax return as an individual or your combined income is between 25,000 and 34,000, uh, you may have to pay income tax on up to 50% of your benefits. More than 34,000, up to 85% of your benefits may be taxable. So generally, if your income is a little bit lower, then you might be paying up to 50%. But if your income is you know, significant, still a fairly low bar, then you're gonna be paying you know, up to 85% included in income. File a joint return. Uh, and you and your spouse have a combined income that is, now we're talking about a married filing joint, between 32,000 and 44,000, you may have to pay income tax on up to 50% of your benefits, more than 44,000, up to 85% of your benefits may be taxable. Uh, if you're married uh, filing separate returns, you probably pay taxes. Remember that uh, married filing separate, the, the government is often skeptical of that filing position, people taking it possibly in order to try to take advantage of some of these uh, income threshold rules. So they often adjust it in an unfavorable way for those filing married filing separate. So be aware. Okay, so line 6A, 6B, and 6C, line 6A, 6B, Social Security Benefits. Uh, you should receive a form SSA 1099. So that's the type of form that, that you're going to be receiving. It's a 1099 type form, which is an indication of saying, oh, this might be income that I have to be reporting, just like other types of 1099s. Showing in box three, the total Social Security benefits paid to you. Box four will show the amount uh, of any benefits you repaid in 2022. If you received railroad retirement benefits treated as Social Security, you should receive a form uh, RRB 1099. Use the Social Security benefits worksheet in these instructions to see if any of your benefits are taxable. So exception 
do not use the social security benefit worksheet in these instructions if any of the following applies you made contributions to a traditional ira for 2022 and you or your spouse were covered by a retirement plan at work or through a self-employment instead use the worksheet on publication 590a to see if any of your social security benefits are taxable and to figure your ira deduction now again you can go through the social security worksheet of course and go through a more formal type of calculation but obviously in practice software is quite useful for doing that the, you know to, to to put together that worksheet so in practice the general idea would be someone's asking you a question is it taxable yeah you're probably gonna have to include up to like 85 percent as income unless your income is relatively low in which case you might have to uh, include something up to like 50 percent and you probably don't want to get into the weeds talking to someone in too much detail on how the tax calculation works and you're probably in practice going to be depending more on the software to do uh the the nitty gritty in terms of the tax calculation so your goal obviously communication with clients and yourself understanding you could get into the nitty gritty of the calculations to better understand it but that's probably not what a, like a client's going to want to hear and the software is going to help you to do that so you repaid any benefits in 2022 and your total repayments box four were more than your total benefits for 2022 box three. None of your benefits are taxable for 2022. Also, if your total repayments in 2022 exceed your total benefits received in 2022 by more than 3,000, you may be able to take an itemized deduction or a credit for part of the excess payments if they were benefits uh, you included in income in an earlier year for more details you can see publication 915 there you file form 255 uh, 5 24563 uh, or 8815 or you exclude employer provided adoption benefits or income from sources with puerto rico instead use the worksheet in publication 915. tip social security information Social Security benefits can now get a variety of information from the SSA, Social Security Administration website, uh, with, with a My Social Security account. So notice that the government is trying to get better with this information on their website. Click on this website. The, the kind of rationale with the IRS and some other government entities was that the websites aren't secure or whatnot, so we don't want to do the, the login and, and, and that kind of stuff. But obviously they've been showing up so badly by other financial institutions that deal with similar kind of, uh, of, of security issues with regards to personal information like financials, institutions, and banks that they're, <laughs> they have to update and, and add this ability to log into accounts. So you would think that we would be logging into these types of accounts like our social security and our, our 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 internal revenue service and whatnot and being able to get information there instead of relying completely on like snail mail still these days and so they they are starting to update all that kind of stuff so including a uh, replacement form ssa 1099 if needed for more information and to set up an account go to the ssa.gov my accountant now notice that some people start to think that the all government entities are kind of like the same as, as though they talk to each other all the time or something and obviously they might share information but the, the the you know the irs doesn't really know exactly what's going on with your state tax situation you know just because they're two government entities and obviously the social security information in terms of identifying who you are is what is used by the irs but you need to know which place to go to when you're talking about a particular thing when you're talking about the taxes based on the 1099 that you got from the government from the ssa then you're you're going to the, you're going to report that to the irs but if you have questions about of course the amount of benefits you're receiving and that kind of stuff then you're going to have to go to the social security uh, information in that website right so disability payments so in other words don't all these all these entities are like talking to a different different bureaucracy and their own little silo that's all they know right so you've got to go to the right silo or you're gonna you're gonna get nowhere they don't know what's going on in any other silo and they love to be able to say that's outside my jurisdiction right i don't know what it, what you're talking about with that that's you know that's that's how it works so disability payments 
Don't include in your income any disability payments, including Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI payments you receive for injuries incurred as a direct result of a terrorist attack directed against the United States or its allies, whether outside or within the United States. Now, obviously, again, this comes into this play where when we have some things that are considered welfare programs, you would think that, you know, the, t the money that you get wouldn't really be taxable in those cases and whatnot. And so th this is where this funny kind of interplay comes between like a welfare state type of thing where the big government is getting to the point where they want this, everybody's retirement plan to be through the government or something like social security is everybody's retirement plan somehow versus a reduction of some of those those benefits and whatnot so that it's actually a welfare program designed to help people with a safety net kind of situation uh and and again that's the interplay that's just a kind of interesting interplay that's playing out in our our thought process of these of these rules at this time so in the case of september 11th attacks injuries eligible for for coverage by the september 11th victim compensation fund are treated as incurred as a direct result of the attack so if the payments are incorrectly reported as taxable on form ssa 1099 don't include the non-taxable portion of income on your tax return you gotta finish these tax returns you may receive a notice from the irs regarding the omitted payments follow the instructions in the notice to explain that the excluded payments aren't taxable for more information about these payments you can see publication 3920 example taxpayer x a firefighter was it was disabled as a direct result of the september 11th terrorist attack on the world trade center x began receiving social security disability insurance ssdi benefits at age 54. x's full retirement age for social security retirement benefits is age 66. x's birthday is april 25th in the year x turned 66 x received 1500 dollars per month in benefits from the social security administration for a total of eighteen thousand dollars because x became eligible for a full retirement benefit in may the month after x turned 66 x can exclude only four months january through april of their annual benefits from their income six thousand dollars x must report the remaining twelve thousand dollars on line 6a x must also complete the social security benefits worksheet to find out if any part of the twelve thousand dollars is taxable tip form rrb 1099 if you need a replacement form rrb 1099 call the railroad retirement board there's a there's a number here and you can go to the the website as well accrued leave payment if you retire on disability any lump sum payment you receive for accrued annual leave is a salary payment so the payment uh, is not a disability payment include it in your income in the tax year you receive it line 6c check the box on line 6c if you elect to use the lump sum election method for your benefits if any of your benefits are taxable for 2022 and they include a lump sum benefit payment that was for an earlier year you may be able to reduce the taxable amount with the lump sum election you can see lump sum election in publication 915 for details so the general takeaway is obviously when we put the money into the social security uh, program it's coming out of our w-2s and whatnot and that's usually taken care of by the employer or we have to do these the uh, self-employment tax if we're a sole uh, proprietor or something like that and and that's going into the social security program when we get the money out of the social security program then it the question is does it have to be included in income generally up to like 85 percent is likely to be included in there unless your uh, income is below uh, a fairly low threshold in which case up to 50 percent might be included in uh in income and therefore the tax rate might be applied to that income we'll take a look at some examples of this in uh, a following presentation